Oh, we got it already. Let's go, baby. Yo, what's up guys, Joe here. Hope all is well with you guys. Welcome back to another full PC build guide. The budget we're working with today is 600 bucks. This is the best NVIDIA system you can build for 600 bucks. We're gonna be using the RTX 3050 and we're gonna be pairing it with an i3 Intel processor. You're gonna be surprised with the performance we get for the money. Anyways guys, if you're new to the channel, you've come to the right place. I don't care if you've never built a PC before, by the end of this video, you will have the confidence and the knowledge to do so. We break the guides into three parts. First, we're gonna go over all the parts and their price and why we picked them. Second, we're gonna be moving into the complete build guide. I'm gonna guide you guys every step of the way from start to finish. And then at the very end, that's the fun part. We're gonna get down, we're gonna frag it up in all popular titles, AAA and eSport titles. It's pretty much a benchmarking montage at the end of the video. So before we jump into our parts overview, guys, I've looked at all your comments and I've taken your feedback on what builds you'd like to see upcoming. We're definitely gonna be doing some of your guys' suggestions for build guides. So comment down below again, what kind of builds you'd like to see, combination of components, and budgets. So for our graphics card, this is an MSI GeForce RTX 3050. Let's open it up. Now it's always a very exciting moment when you open up your first graphics card. So that's what you're gonna be experiencing. Rejoice and enjoy the moments. It has a nice little back plate here, two fans, black and gray colorway, only requires six pins for the juice. Oh my goodness, I did not expect to see that, but it does have an old school DVI video input. You have a DisplayPort input and an HDMI input. So this little guy right here is gonna be working with our Intel i3. This is a very solid combination for gaming. This CPU is so affordable. 100 bucks for what we're getting, guys. It's a great value for your buck. And we are gonna be using the included stock Intel heatsink. I'm gonna leave it in its box right now to not smudge up the pre-applied thermal paste. So for our motherboard, again by MSI, this is the Micro ATX form factor. We're rocking the H610 chipset. It has built-in Wi-Fi, and we're gonna be rocking DDR4 for this build. This board here is all we're gonna be needing to make sure our system runs to its fullest potential. We have two RAM slots here. Here are the video ports. You got a pretty good amount of USB ports. So outside of our motherboard, I'm gonna be getting our Wi-Fi antennas. If you're gonna be using Wi-Fi, I like to use wired, our included IO shield, and this bag with this little screw, which we're gonna to use to install our M.2 SSD later. Power cable. For our RAM, we're going with 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance kit. This is 3200 megahertz. Trusty kit, this is a well-priced kit and it's gonna fulfill what we need it to do. For our storage, we're going with a 500 gigabyte Crucial P3 M.2 SSD. If you need more storage, go ahead and up it. The reason we will 500 is because of course the budget. This is a fast, respectable speed. We're not gonna be disappointed with its performance. Now for the juice, we're going with a 600 watt bronze rated power supply by Eris Game. And here it is. This is gonna be plenty of juice for our system. I'm getting the power cable out as well. And inside of here, we have screws to secure this to our case later. And now the last essential part is our case. We have ourselves here a micro ATX form factor case for our micro ATX motherboard by BitPhoenix, an OG case company. And for the money, this is a great case. So here we have our beautiful white colorway case. Now the reason why I have a little smile on my face right now is because I just pictured it in my head exactly how the system's gonna look. And with the extras that we're gonna throw in here, I just, the system's gonna look so dope and it's only gonna be 600 bucks. That's not free, but it's not expensive either. Like for 600 bucks, you're gonna get a lot of power. This is a great case and it's a great value because it comes with everything you need already. It already has two pre-installed RGB fans in the front and it has one in the back. So we're covered with our fans. Nice high quality tempered glass side panel. It's a case that has good airflow. All this is cutouts right here. Air is gonna flow in nicely and the hot air isn't gonna come out from the back perfectly. Good case, good airflow, good price. Not disappointed with this case at all. So that concludes all our essential parts, guys. And that ran us 600 bucks. Up on the screen is the grand total. Now we're gonna jump into our extras list, which is totally optional. It's only for the aesthetics of our system. We're gonna be throwing in Blue Ranger for our Funko Pop of choice. And he's gonna look sick in there. So this guy is rocking blue and white. We're gonna go with our brand Crater Custom Sleep Power Supply Extension. In the blue colorway. Our RGB LED strip kit. It comes with two strips and strong magnetic attachments, which is gonna add a big splash of light inside our build to make our components stand out and look dope. And that's it, guys. We're gonna fly through this build. All right, guys, well, I'm really excited to build this $600 rig and then see how it performs in all the titles. It's gonna be dope. Remember, guys, all parts for this build are linked in the video description and comment down below what builds you guys are interested in seeing and we will definitely get to them. Before we jump into the build guide, there's currently a sale on CraterHQ.com. All Crater teaser discounted for the holidays, guys. So be sure to check that out. That's also linked in the video description.
All right, guys, we're going to start the guide and make sure to stay tuned until the end where we're going to put our system to the test against all current popular titles. And that's going to be dope. We're going to frag it up. First, we're going to be taking a look at our CPU socket. We're going to pull this lever all the way to the side and up. We also want to lift this up as well. So let's take a close look at our i3. So if we take a close look at our i3, there's going to be an arrow on the bottom left hand side of it, guys. And if we take a look at our CPU socket, we're also going to find an arrow on the bottom left. It's marked on this plastic tab. So first, we're going to get this lever and pull it to the side and all the way up. We are then going to pull this up so we're going to line up the arrow over i3 with the arrow on our cpu socket that's how we know we have it in the right place we're going to hover it over and then simply drop it into the socket and it'll fall right in just like that and as you can see our i3 sits nicely in the cpu socket now we're going to put this thing back down and you want to make sure that it's under this right here so push it down a little more and now we're going to pull the lever back down to its original position you're going to feel some tension that's normal you're not breaking anything and then we're going to tuck it in right there and this thing comes right off and here's a closer look all right done now we're going to install our holding the stock Intel heatsink. So let's get it out. Be sure to not smudge the pre-applied thermal paste. We're gonna turn it around and all we're doing is clipping in the four points of the heatsink with the four points on our motherboard. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get leveled with it as I'm laying it down to make sure I drop it in with the points all lined up the first time. And there we go, it's in. Now we wanna press down so it could clip into the point, that clip. Now the opposite side, push it in, the other two sides and clip. Now we're gonna want to look at the back just to confirm that all of them clipped in all the way. This is how it should look, guys. This one is in all the way. This one could still use a bit of a push. So I'm going to push it. And there you go, we heard a little clip and this came up more. So now these two on top are in all the way and to make sure these two remaining ones are in all the way, simply just hold the board. Go ahead and just put your two fingers back here to support the board and not bend anything. And then we just push in with more pressure and do the same thing for the other one. And that one did clip in a little more. It's in, then you can hold it from the heatsink. And the final step is to connect the fan of our heatsink to our CPU fan header on our motherboard. And that is right there. And it is also labeled CPU fan. Done, our CPU is installed. I totally forgot about the apple cider. I meant to do it in the beginning, but it slipped my mind. So I'm gonna pop it open right now. Cheers, gentlemen and ladies. <sighs> We'll be sipping that as we build this rig. Next is the installation of our RAM. So first we're gonna pull back the levers on our RAM slots. Okay, now all we need to do is make sure that we line up the indent of the RAM with the part of the RAM slot that is not indented. So the vengeance text is gonna be on the left side of the motherboard and we're gonna put it into the slot. And once it's in, we're then gonna push down with both thumbs equal force. And this side will go all the way in as well as the other one and you'll hear the lever clip back up. We're gonna do the same thing for our second stick. We're gonna get it into place, it's in, and push down both thumbs equal force. Done, RAM installed, and it should look like this. Next, the installation of our 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD. So we're gonna install our M.2 into this part of the motherboard. This is the M.2 slot. Now, remember the little bag we got out of our motherboard earlier? We need that. So we're gonna screw this guy in to this first point right here. And then we simply use a zero screwdriver to get it secure all the way. And it's in. So now we want to get this piece and point it to the top left side like that. And we're going to put our M.2 in now. And we're going to let it rest on this standoff. And this is what we then use to secure the M.2. And we simply push it up. And the M.2 is now going to be held by that piece. Now we're ready to put our motherboard inside of our case. So let's go ahead and get the front and back panels off. All right, we have an instruction manual that we don't need. If we take a look at the back of the case, this is where we find our accessories bag with all the screws we need. Set this to the side. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get our IO shield that came with our motherboard, and we're gonna clip it into place right here in the back of our case from the inside. So we're gonna put it inside, and we want these three holes right here to be on the bottom, and we're gonna clip in all four sides by pushing it into the slot. And there we go, it's in. All right, so when installing a motherboard inside your case, you wanna make sure that first, all these points on our motherboard with all the motherboard standoff inside the case. So sometimes, depending on the parts you pick, you will have to rearrange these to line up with the ports on the motherboard. But in our case, the standoffs are already exactly where they need to be. So we're ready to put in the motherboard. So we have a total of six motherboard standoffs inside our case. I will go ahead and circle them red. All right, so we're gonna get our motherboard in here. And first we wanna line up all the ports with the IO shield we just clipped in. And this fan right here has cables. I don't want the cables to be underneath our motherboard. So I'm lifting up these cables and I'm putting my motherboard down. Okay, now I'll let go of these cables. So I made sure these cables were not underneath the motherboard. We don't wanna squish any cables. We line up the ports with the IO shield. And now we set our board down. Let's take a look at our accessories bag now. And we're gonna be securing our motherboard with this screw right here. I'll start with this middle one.
Our motherboard is now secured to our case. We're gonna go ahead and circle all the points again. And that's it guys, motherboard is now secured. Okay, now if you are going to be using the Wi-Fi of this motherboard, most motherboards with Wi-Fi capabilities, they'll already have these. It'll be part of the ports. But for this motherboard, we need to add this accessory. It's going to go into one of our PCI lanes like this. So first thing we're going to do is get this out of the way. And we're gonna be getting rid of our fourth PCI lane bracket. As you're getting this out, I'm just pushing it in a little bit, but not too much because I don't want this to scratch the motherboard right here. So I'm just pushing it in a little bit and then I'm gonna pull it down from the top like this. And then I'm just gonna wiggle it like this, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that's what will loosen this thing. There we go, we got that piece off. And now this last one, up, down, up, down, pulling. And there we go, we got it off gently without damaging our motherboard right here. And now we're ready to put it into place just like that. And we're gonna secure it with a screw that came with the case's accessory bag. All right, that's nice and secure. Now we're gonna use a zero screwdriver to undo this little screw. And this is our Wi-Fi right here. Go ahead and pull this thing out. We're going to be connecting these wires to these two points right here. How we're gonna do this is we need to make sure we line it up. And then once we have it, we need to push it. And I'm just gonna use my nail to get it in there. It won't go in when you're pushing it if you didn't line it up correctly. So make sure you line it up correctly. There we go. And there it is connected now. Same thing for the second wire. We're gonna line it up good and push it down. There we go. You need to make sure you line it up perfectly, guys, and then push in. Or these little wires then won't connect. But it should look like that, guys. And now, you guessed it, we're just going to resecure this. And this thing is resecured. It's like our M.2 SSD. Put it into the slot, and we secure it with the screw. So back here is where we then simply screw in our two antennas. And there we go. That's our Wi-Fi. But like I said, guys, I always use a wired connection. So I'm not even going to screw these in. But if you're using Wi-Fi, that's what you do. All right, guys. So now let's go to the back of our case. And we're going to be securing our power supply. But first, I'm going to undo this down here to then get rid of our hard drive cage because we're not going to be using hard drives. OK, now let's put in our power supply. That gives us more space to cable manage down here by removing the hard drive cage. All right, guys. So we're going to put in our power supply. Right Right here with the fan of the power supply facing down. Put on do the cables and then we secure it with the screws that came with it. But these screws also come with the case as well. It's going to be a total of four screws. All right, guys, we're almost done. Now we're moving on to the connection of all our cables. We do have ourselves a little spaghetti mess here, but don't worry, we're just gonna take it one cable at a time and we're gonna break down all our cables into three groups. First group of cables is all our power cables from the power supply that are gonna power things. Second group of cables is our case cables, which connect things like the power button and the USB ports up here to the motherboard. And third and final group of cables is all our fans and our lighting. All right, so kicking it off with our first group of cables, our power cables. So first I'm gonna be hooking up our optional power supply custom sleeve extension cables. Remember, these are simply for aesthetic. I highly recommend them for your system because it makes your system pop and look super dope. So instead of hooking this up to the motherboard, this is going to hook up to our extension cable. And then this is gonna hook up to our motherboard and be on display in the front of our build. And it's gonna look super cool. And it comes included with cable combs. And this is what straightens out the cable and makes it look really clean. Straightens them out like this. So we just connected our 24 pin power cable extension. This is a full kit, but I'm only gonna be connecting one more and that is the cable that's going to connect to our RTX 3050. So we're going to look for this cable right here which is labeled PCI Express from the power supply PCIe and as you can see it's an 8 pin cable when you push this up it does split into 6 plus two pins for a total of eight. We're gonna look at our power supply extension cables and we also wanna find an eight pin one that split into six plus two. That's how we know we have the right cable. And I'm going to now clip in the PCI cable from our power supply, but I'm only gonna clip in six because we only need six for our RTX 3050. So only six are connected. So now when we're hooking this up to our RTX 3050 later, we're just gonna pull this back and only hook this part in for the six pins. Now, let's plug in the cables. Now, first cable we're gonna hook up is our big 24 pin power cable. We wanna make sure that this clip right here clips back here. So we're going to line it up straight and then push it in until it clips. And there we go. It's in all the way and it has clipped back here. Next, we're gonna hook up our CPU power cable. And that is up here. So we're gonna get the power cable that is labeled CPU right here, very easy to find. And again, we want the clip of it to clip on top. So I'm gonna line it up straight with the clip on the top and push it in all the 
away till it clips. And it should look like that. And that is our power cables. Moving on to our second group of cables, our case cables. Little helper here just came to say hi. It's not a little helper, it's a big helper. This is Tara. She's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. She's really buff. She works out a lot. She's pretty dope. She's very loyal. All right. Yeah. Get out of here. So now for our first case cable, we're gonna be hooking up our HD audio cable. It's labeled. The text is right there. And we're gonna hook this cable up to the far bottom left side of our motherboard. It only goes in one way with the HD audio text facing up. And it should look just like that, guys. Far left. Next case cable is gonna go right under our big 24 pin. And that is our USB 3 cable. So it has a hump on one of its sides and we want that side on the left. And we're gonna line it up straight. And once we have it lined up straight, we push it. it. Should look like that. So now we're in the back of our case. Our last case cable is right here. It's these little JFP1 cables. One of them is hooked up to the fan controller. So we're just going to split it apart. That's good. And now we have more slack to hook up these little JFP1s. All right, back to the front. First cable we're plugging in is our power LED cable. The positive one has a plus on it. That's gonna go on the left side, the negative one on the right. And that's gonna hook up to the top row of pins, first and second pin. And it should look like that with the positive on the left. Next is our HDD LED cable. Again, we want the positive on the left. So we're gonna flip it and you see that little arrow? That is the positive. And this one is going to hook up into the bottom set of pins, first and second pins, right underneath our power LED cable with that arrow, aka positive on the left. Look like that. We hooked it up right underneath it. Last is our power switch. Positive and negative does not matter on this one. And this one hooks up to the top row of pins, third and fourth pins, right next to the power LED. All right, guys, now our third and final group of cables, our fans and our lighting. So we're gonna go to the back of our case and back here is where we're gonna find our fan control. Now, every single fan is connected to this controller as well as the lighting of the fan. So we need to give this fan controller power first of all. So we're gonna locate the SATA power cable from our power supply and plug it right in right here. Okay, the controller now has power. Next, the fan controller has two cables. We're gonna be connecting both of these to the motherboard. So the first cable connects all the fans that are connected to the fan controller to the motherboard. The second cable connects all the lighting of all the fans that are connected to the controller to the motherboard. So we gotta hook both of these up. So the first cable we're plugging in is the PWM, which connects all the fans to the motherboard. So it should look like that. Next is a three pin RGB cable that only goes in one way and that goes in right here. And we are done with that. Now we're gonna be installing our optional Crater RGB LED strip kit. I'll link a video down in the description on how to install these. Right now I'm just gonna throw them in. So I always throw a strip up here and one on the side like this. And then we'll have a nice splash of light inside our build to show off all our components. All right, guys, now our final step, the installation of our graphics card. First, we need to make room for it. So we're gonna be removing the first and second brackets. Remember, when we take this one off, we wanna make sure not to damage the motherboard right here. So I'm going to push it down, but push it up as well. So I won't scratch this against our motherboard. And once I have it bent in like that, just up, down, up, down, and there you go. We're gonna be putting our RTX 3050 right here. Let's go ahead and pull the lever all the way back. And then we're gonna line up our card with the PCI slot. And once we have it lined up, we're gonna simply push in and that lever is gonna clip back up. That's how we know we put it in all the way and it's secure. Now we're gonna secure it with two screws that came with the case. And final step, we need to secure this plate back on there. Cool. And now the final step, we need to give it its juice. So I'm gonna wire the power cable from down here and plug in our six pin juice. Now I'm just going to clean this cable up a bit, have it looking super clean. And we're done guys, if you were following along, congrats. Now we're gonna throw our Funko Pop in there, cable manage the back and re-secure our two panels and we're good to go, first boot up after that. Guys, I'm not even gonna lie, this build came out sick. Let's get the lights off. So we're gonna get the juice plugged in. We're gonna do our first little peel. All right, guys, here we go. First boot up. If you were following along and this is your first build, congratulations. Check it out. Now we can control the lighting right here. There's a button on the case that changes the lights of the fans, not the RGB strips. The RGB strips are gonna be controlled with software on our desktop. 
This build came out real clean looking. I just really love the white on blue colorway. It just looks really clean. The Intel heatsink, by the way, has like a little circle that's blue. So that matches as well. For 600 bucks, this is just a beautiful system that's gonna perform well at 1080p. We're about to find out what performance this system gets, but trust, you will not be disappointed. Dope looking system. Good job, guys. And the airflow of this case, as we mentioned earlier, is amazing. Remember, guys, every single part we use for this build will be linked in the video description. And now what we need to do is we need to install Windows 11, our operating system, from a USB flash drive. I made a video tutorial on how to install Windows 11 from a flash drive for free. That is linked in the video description. And then next, we're going to have to install all the drivers. I also made a video on how to do that, linked in the video description. All right, guys, now the awesome, fun part. We're going to frag it up, put this build to the test. Let's do it. Settings for Warzone 2, 1080p resolution, the quality settings, NVIDIA DLSS is set to quality as well. And here are the rest of the settings. For our FOV, it's to the max 120. Let's do this. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got up price for y'all. Snake eyes on ice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. A6 hard to How much money do we have? We have a Breaker. Hit a lot. Let's go. Go, 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 go. I don't think they know where yep, they're over there still. They don't know where we're at. Right. Broken shield. Dead. Oh, the gas is closing. We gotta go. Oh, we're in zone, we're in zone, we're good. Let's get the high ground. Oh I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I died. Good job, I'm back. Nice. Oh, right in front, right in front, right in front, right under me. Oh, he's right here. He's down, he's down. Rocket shield, he's dead. Good job, oh. good job. All right. Oh, crap! Good loot. Okay, I'm going up the zip line. Hey, shield up, shield up. Okay, I'm going yeah. up the zip, I'm going up the zip. Up there. Oh, I see him. Oh, one. Yeah, we can go to zone. Oh, you don't want to go, like, to the roof? Oh, we could do that? All right, let's go. Stairs. Right here. Hit him. Hit him a lot. Dead. I need to heal. I need to heal. Heal up. Good stuff. We got to get up to the roof for a zone. Poor guys. Mercy for them. <laughs> Dead. Another one. Dead. I think we're going to have to go in. Cause... Oh, he's going to die to zone. We just gotta stay in the zone. Okay. Like, wait, we, we don't have, don't have gas, gas masks. Mask. Does he have one? He does, bro. Self res, have self res. Oh my god, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. No way. He's hiding in the corner. <laughs> Performance was amazing, though. Next game. Settings for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We're gonna be playing at 1080p. For the quality settings, NVIDIA DLSS is set to quality as well. Here are the rest of the settings. And for the view to the max 120. Let's do it. Our goal is to get the juggernaut kills here. Let's go, baby. Real juiced up, baby! Here we go! Come on, I'm the chicken out! I'm the chicken out, guys! Let's go, 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 go! Oh, no! I want to get a kill before the, before the clock runs out. Come on! That was a fun match. We got the juggy. Performance was really, really good, too. The utilization of the RTX 3050 was good. The game was super smooth to me, guys. I love that match. That was awesome. Next game. Settings for Halo Infinite. 90 FOV. We put the resolution scale to 80%. At 1080p res, here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. They have rockets. They have rockets. Back up. Back up. I got one. I got a double kill. Gentlemen, we gotta score this. Ooh! 
Oh, we won for the win. Yeah! <laughs> that was an amazing match. That was so much fun. Performance was great for the price point. We hit that 144. Next game. Settings for the newly released The Finals. 1080p resolution. NVIDIA Reflex and OnPlus Boost. The LSS is set to quality. Field of view to the max 100. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Oh my god, the balls are... Money, he has nine thousand. Oh, nice. Nice, bro. All right, man. You need to deposit. Go deposit, my guy. Go, 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 go. Heck yeah. Woo -hoo! Imagine if you actually have a team and not two randoms. The communication. It would be so awesome. That's night too, man. I, I like the op. He's so fast. And he goes, pow, pow, pow. It's cool. It's cool. All right, guys. Next game. Settings for Apex Legends. 1080p res. 110 for the FOV to the max. And here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. All right, gentlemen. Wolf Squad for the win. Let's go. No mercy. guy we choked right there at the end next game guys settings for valorant 1080p resolution graphics quality here it is let's go all right let's win this Oh my goodness, dude. No way. No way. I'm three for three. Oh my. Finally. And I was the last kill. Five. Fifth place. Performance was good, though. Next game. Settings for Fortnite. 1080p resolution. We have it set to performance mode, and here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Go. Oh, it's right there. Oh, there we are. Eliminated Peter Griffin, apparently. Fortnite is weird. Wow, uh, we're getting a lot of FPS. Oh my goodness, man. I'll take the dub. <laughs> All right, performance was really good. I got impressed by Fortnite's performance. I didn't know it was going to be this good. Next game. Settings for the new Arc Ascended 1080p resolution. We set everything to low because Arc is very demanding. And for the RTX settings, we have it on balance for the DLSS. Let's see how it performs. Welcome to the Arc universe. The game is surprisingly running really well. We're above 60 right now, more than playable. Our RTX 3050 is topped off too. It's in the high 90s. That's really good. Got ourselves a woolly mammoth. And I don't know what these things are. Now we're gonna swim in the water. FPS drops down to drop down to 40 something. But it is still playable. Sub dude. Sub dude. Alright. Well, Arc Descended is definitely a pass. Performance is pretty good. Settings for Rainbow Six Siege, 1080p resolution, max FOV 90 for the graphics settings. Here they are. Let's do it. Let's get both. I'm ready to win.
Ooh, get dumb, kid. Where the? Where was he? Good game, guys. Good game. All right, guys. Performance prestige was good. Next game. Settings for Counter Strike 2. 1080p resolution for advanced video. Here it is. Let's do it. Woo! That's right, boy. Bro, my op is on stairs. Yeah, they're coming for A. Yeah. <laughs> what? Bruh. I don't even know them. <laughs> Behind her stairs, bro. We didn't get the dub for CS2 this time, but the performance was good and the game was smooth. All right, guys, that's a wrap. The performance it honestly surprised me. It performed better than what I expected. Thanks for watching until the end. I appreciate all you guys' support. Remember, we have a sale on all Creator Tees at CreatorHQ.com. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.